Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to design the perfect powerlifting program. This is actually going to be a series of videos, it's going to take me a little while to get through everything, but we're going to start with the most important thing, which is periodization. And actually, to understand periodization, you need to go back one step further and start with general adaptation syndrome. So general adaptation syndrome is an idea that describes how the body responds to training. I've got this graph here, and on the x-axis going across, you have time. So let's say this is days, and you've got one, two, three, four, and so on. And this is performance. So if we have a baseline level of performance, that's where we are now. This is good performance, so PRs, you know, great workouts. This is bad performance, so missing reps even getting weaker. Obviously, our goal is to go from here to here. And general adaptation syndrome explains how your body responds to your actual training. So you start out with a workout, right? An intense workout. And actually, so here's the workout. Your body actually gets weaker at first. This is your body kind of freaking out, right? So you train really hard, and all of a sudden you get sore, you feel tired, run down. And your body actually cannot perform as well in this state as it could before. So you feel run down the first day, maybe the second day the, the DOMS really kicks in and you're really hurting. And then maybe by the end of the second day you start to feel a little bit better. How long depends on how hard your workout is, and we'll get to that in a later video. But let's say around day two you start feeling better, and you start to improve. The really cool thing about your body is that when it returns, it starts to heal up, it heals those muscle fibers. When it does, you don't stop at baseline. You actually keep going and your performance increases. So this is known as the alarm phase when your body's freaking out. Why you feel sore. This phase, as your performance increases, right, going up towards these PRs, this is called supercompensation. So, ideally what you do is your performance starts to climb like this, here you train again, right? And so if I train again, my performance will dip, right? And then it will start to go back up. And if I can just keep doing that and keep doing that, right, it will go up and up and up. The problem arises when I train here instead, right? So if I'm waiting, I'm still in the alarm phase, and I try and train again, whoa, now my performance is way down here. And now it's going to take a lot longer for me to just get back up to baseline. This is all wasted time in here. The other risk you can see is actually this won't just keep going up forever if I don't train. What will happen is if I stop training, I'll start to see a decrease in performance as well. So right here, this dotted line, this area is overtraining, this area is undertraining. And obviously our goal is to not do either of those, but to stay in the supercompensation phase for as long as possible. Unfortunately, our bodies can't do that forever, right? So if you've ever done a program like Strong Lifts or some other basic 555 program, you know eventually you can't keep adding weight every day. So say you start out with 225 and you do that first set of five. Next week you come back and hit 230. Maybe you work all the way up to 315 for a set of five, but eventually you're only going to get four reps, or maybe you only get three reps. And that can be really frustrating. The solution is periodization. So your body can't stay in that super compensation, compensation, super compensation phase forever, because when you talk about training stimulus, there's actually two variables involved. There's both volume and intensity. Volume is just the number of lifts that you're doing in a given week, or a given period of time. We'll talk more about that later. But basically, it's the number of sets you're doing times the number of reps you're doing. Intensity, for our purposes, is just a percentage of your one rep max. Now, when I get into talking about bodybuilding programming, we'll talk about how intensity there is a little bit different. But for strength, intensity is your percentage of one rep max. So let's think about a program like five by, a generic 5x5. Five five. In those, you generally have the same template that you do every week. And maybe one day's heavy, one's medium, one's light. But your goal over time is to add weight to the heavy workout each time. So in that situation, 
your volume is constant. You're doing the same volume every workout. But your intensity is continually increasing because you're continuing to add weight every workout. So that's volume, that's intensity. Now if we look at the total stimulus, stimulus on your body, that means it's going up just like this intensity is. Your body's never getting a break and that's why it can only respond for so long. But what if we did things a little bit differently? What if instead of doing a constant volume and constantly increasing intensity, what if over time we started with a very high amount of volume and gradually decreased it and we start with a relatively low intensity and increase it? You wouldn't want it exactly straight like this, but what actually happens is that when you vary these two variables, when you change these two variables like this over time, decreasing volume, increasing intensity, your body's able to respond for much, much longer than it is with that linear progression scheme alone. This is what the Russian scientist found out in the 1960s, and when he did, it really changed the paradigm for training for every sport. Not just strength sports, but for running, for um, throwing, for any type of thing that involves power or strength, this really changed the game. And so it's something that you have to incorporate no matter what. So how do you actually do that? How do you go from your 5x5 program to something that looks like this? It's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is start with high reps and then over time go to low reps. This is probably the very standard um, percentage-based routine that you guys have seen but maybe not fully understood. So if you start out right in week one and I'm doing three sets of ten at maybe 65%, and then week two, I go to three sets of eight, 70%. And then we would go all the way down. And now maybe in week 10, we're doing two sets of three at 90%. And then 11, two sets of two at let's say 95%. And you wouldn't want to use these exact percentages. These are just examples. But then maybe we take a break, and then in week 12, we test our one rep maxes. What you're going to find, if you're past the beginner stage of training, that with this style of program, your one rep max is going to be much higher than if you just stick with that standard 5x5 five five template. So a lot of popular programs out there have some form of periodization built in. So if you look at 531, where you're doing kind of a, a set with as many reps as possible at the end of the end of the workout, that's in a way incorporating periodization. The problem with templates like that is they often encourage overreaching and they often don't have enough variety or frequency to satisfy a more advanced trainer, training. And so that's what we'll talk about in the following videos.